And here is the built model that we built up in the, the last video. Uh, all I've done to it is put a coat of primer on it. None of the tools and accessories are on there yet. We're gonna build and paint those separately. As you see here, the tracks are not attached and that is because I'm gonna pull those off right now as well as all of the road wheels so we can uh, get inside painting inside those, those wells underneath the sponson a lot easier. So the first thing we need to do is take all those parts off and then we are going to spray the entire model with a nice coat of NATO black as our nice shadow coat. So jumping a little bit ahead here, uh, obviously I left the olive drab paint from Tamiya dry completely and then I sprayed the entire model with TS-79, the semi-gloss uh, paint or clear coat I should say from Tamiya and let that fully dry overnight. Uh, as you saw, I painted all of the, uh, the rubber on the road wheels and of course now attached those back on to the kit. So now we have a slight little sheen and putting the lacquer clear coat on Hopefully you can see and having the olive drab not perfect. There are some slight variations in the paint color, which I want. We want that to be kind of look like a, uh, a slight fading in some areas. Now we are going to highlight that even more later on, but for right now, I wanna be able to get the decals on. So that is why the semi-gloss is going to help out quite a bit. Also, I'm gonna turn this to the front here. I also have cut a piece of lumber here that is gonna go up here on the front of the uh, plate. That's what those little brackets are for. And you'll also notice, since we've got some pieces on here, I've drawn some lines on here. We're gonna cut those out and then drop them into place. Cause I've seen that actually done on some real tanks where they still had the tow cable going through. So I'm gonna go roughly just cut those out. That's how the crews would have been. And with that on the front, we can stow things like, you know, fuel tanks or extra road wheels, any of that kind of stuff that would be on top of there. So what I have to do now is start doing the decals and then we will put the... Now I am starting to cut into the decals. So I have a very nice uh, sharp number 11 blade and a uh, metal ruler here, very, very fine. And I'm going up to just the American stars and there's just a slight little bit of film around the outer edge of the, uh, the stars. But uh, if I can take just a couple of moments and cut that all off, it's just gonna make it that much easier to put them on and not having to worry about any silvering. Now, obviously there will be a little bit of um, extra material when we go to put the numbers on, but we're gonna cut them in a, a random pattern so there are no sharp edges that make it wanna stick out. And then we'll, of course, once we put the decals on, we'll put a couple of coats of clear color over on top of it, and that should seal them in really well and get rid of any of the fine lines that you would have by putting on decals. And to help out with the decals too, we're gonna to use a little Mark Fit straw. Make sure we get a nice coat on the bottom of where the decal is gonna go. And our decal has been sitting in water for a few minutes. And then it's just a matter of laying it in place where we want it. And once that goes on, I can put a couple of coats of Mark Fit Strong on top. 
and making sure that the decal is perfectly straight. Got to go align that a little bit. So there are only a, a few decals that I need to put on here, and I'm going to go ahead and take care of all those right now, and I'll come back and show you what they look like. I now have all of the decals that I want to put in place on the vehicle. I've got the serial number right here in the back, uh, the name Denise for the name of the tank, as well as the white star and a white star on the front, plus the uh, divisional markings of 8th Armor on the front and back. Decided to leave the uh, white star off of the turret. Uh, the one that I was doing was actually blacked out. And honestly, I like the, the idea of just no star on the side. I've seen lots and lots of pictures where many Shermans had very few markings, if, if any, on the side. They were usually painted over, a little less uh, noticeable. After I let all the decals dry for a couple of hours, we sprayed it one more time with, to me, as TS-80 now, a flat coat to seal in all of our paint job. Now what I want to do is I want to do a little, uh, little highlighting and a little shadowing on it here. So I am taking XF-60 and XF60. So we're taking seven parts olive drab, which is the base color right here, and one part of XF60. You've mixed it up, and now we're going to go ahead and spray on here some little highlight patterns. And you might even be able to see a little bit that I've started to do here in the back, just to make things kind of pop. Remember, it's going to be a little stark to start with, but once we start putting all of our weathering agents on it and stuff like that, it'll really tone it down. So let's go ahead and do that right now. And here is that uh, highlighting and shadowing effect uh, over the entire tank. Hopefully you can see it pretty well on camera that it has some nice variations in tone. Remember, it's a little, a little drastic right now, but we're going to be putting so much weathering agents on and things like that. It's going to really die down quite a bit. Now I'm going over with a real sharp brush and some old rust as our chipping medium. And we're just going right around some of the areas that we would have some chips and scratches especially around welds and we can create some bigger bigger scratches and obviously on 16 scale you have a little bit more leeway than you would in uh, 35th scale and i'm trying to keep my hand out of the way here so you can see what i'm working on we're just going down the line of the welds, the welds usually a lot of times lose the paint because they're raised above the regular surface of the tank. Zoom in a little bit closer so you can see what I'm actually doing here. Now the paint will go on a little bit bright at first, but as it dries, you see it gets a, a darker tone over here. And then we can also, with a real pointy part of the brush, work on doing some bigger scratches. And using the same brush, we're going to use a little bit of a darker chipping color now to create a little bit of variation so everything is not all monotone with the chip color. Can cover some of it over, mix a little bit of it together. You can also go back over scratches add a little bit of different variation in color as if that part is oxidized a little bit differently creating some different scratches things like that and i'm going to kind of just go back and forth with the two different colors
now we are adding another dimension of chipping. This is just a NATO black color that we're going over and creating some older chips, ones that where the, uh, the metal is oxidized underneath it or gotten extra dirt in it. And remember, this is before any of the washes get put on, so it'll sometimes look a little stark right now. And we're not going to go too crazy, just create some scratches, some, some bigger chips. And now we're going to take a just a ragged foam piece of sponge here and we are going to put some more fine scratches and these scratches are going to tie together all of the lines that we did earlier. This will add all the little micro ones that the brush just can't duplicate. all these areas where now I am adding a little clear enamel thinner to the area that I want to start putting some wash on and we're going to use some streaking grime from ammo by MIG and just start applying it into these areas here. Put it on a not super heavy. Let it start to build up in some of these cracks. And then dipping the brush back in clean enamel thinner again, kind of spread it out. And that is just one of a couple different colors we're gonna use. We'll also put a little bit of a dark streaking grime too to kind of blend the multiple colors together. And only put that in certain areas. So like around this seam here, let it build up. Now using a streaking rust effect, lightly I'm going to put a few little streak marks come down here.
Then after it's had a few minutes to dry, I'm gonna just take a dense foam pad here and kind of just pull down on it and kind of blend those together. Now we're gonna add some greasy, oily, dirty effect for the fuel filler areas. And right now I'm just taking a little pigment powder. In this case, it is European Earth. And just putting a little bit of around. Make sure we get lots and lots of powder blended up into these areas here. Just like that. Now we're going to take a little bit of streaking fuel and just touching it in here and this will mix two these two together and get us a nice greasy grimy effect Now we are creating a little bit of extra dirt and dust on the vehicle. And I'm just using that European earth again, dry. And just gonna let it accumulate in some of these areas. Put it on a little thick and then we can always wipe off all of the excess that we don't want. Just taking our sponge again. Next up, I've installed the tracks in place and now we're gonna put a little bit of mud and dirt and debris inside the, just like this track, but we're gonna put it on the transmission cover as well as this other track. So to start off with, using turned earth from Ammo by MIG. It's a very, very thick paste and we want just a very, very little bit of it. And I'm gonna try to keep my hand out of the way on this right here. We're just gonna blot a little bit down in through here and next while it is still wet get rid of all the excess use a little bit of dark earth and keeping it on the same brush just start pounding it into it mixing the two together and that's how you're going to get this effect right here it's partial dried up partial wet did not want to cover too much of the uh, divisional markings but and show you on the track over here too. So force it into all the little crevices. And then powder. And we don't want to, or at least I don't want a lot of dirt and mud buildup. So I'm gonna keep just going over it and over it and over it and spreading it out. So it just leaves little remnants, just like in here, left behind and the mud will actually help the uh, pigment stick very well. So get it nice. And then of course, we'll put a touch of metallic powder on top of the outer tread right there. But you can see what I'm working on like that. Go a little bit higher up here. 
once again the pigment powder and the pigment powder you want to go up a little bit farther beyond where the mud portion was because that's going to represent the dried mud and dirt And then we can take a drier brush and using just the uh, the dark earth apply a little bit above that going up through the vehicle a little lighter in these areas And while we have a nice messy surface because all of that pastels and washes do make a mess, we are going to go ahead and paint the tools. So to start off with, I am using Tamiya's XF59 as a base color for our wooden tools. And don't be afraid of letting the paint thicken up a little bit and going over it a few more times because it will create brush strokes. But actually, in this case, brush strokes are actually helpful in here because it is going to create a little bit of a grain effect for the next step. So once that dries, and once that dries, we're now using a different tool here because this paint has had a chance to set up. We are just using Tamiya's brown panel liner. And we're just going to put some coats of that on here. At the start, we will take a little black panel liner and mix it with the, the brown up near the where the tools are right here. Where the tool, the wood meets the tool, I should say. <laughs> and then kind of blend it in with some more brown. And I will go back and paint that olive drab later on, but just kind of flow that out. And you see how it starts to pool. Now let's let that dry for a little while and I'll show you what it looks like once it's dry. And here we are, here is the completed model. Now, the only thing I do want to still add to this will be a little bit more stowage uh, in the sense of loading up the engine deck, the rear platform with some more fuel cans, uh, and maybe even a little bit more on the very front here. I actually took uh, some of the extra track I had from the, the Stug build from Das Work in 16 scale, as well as one of the tarps, uh, rolled it up and rolled up and threw it on the front there. Let uh, some idea what it's going to look like once we get all of that. But once that stuff actually shows up, which should be in the next couple of weeks, then I will show you guys how painting it up and installing it on to the Sherman. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the turntable on, let you see a little 360 view of how the thing came out. And as you see in the back here, the uh, all the uh, the footprints and debris and dirt and stuff all across the back of the uh, the tank, as you'd imagine, getting built up with dirt and all kinds of stuff.
and finally, I put the Sherman tank on top of the diorama that I created a couple months back, as well as the unweathered utility truck out in front. Now that I have an idea of how the weathering is on the Sherman, I'm going to go ahead and duplicate that on to this piece right here. And that way we can put them together to finish the diorama off in the future once we get some more figures and things done. So I want to take this opportunity to thank you as always for watching and please stay tuned because I have many more videos coming.